chamber, those who are present online, Member Vaz and Member Lee, thank you for joining us out in remote virtual space. Welcome to Member Brown and Guy for this morning's meeting. Today we have apology, apologies for absent Mr. Philip Henriquez, Dr. Angela Brown Burke, and Member George Wright. Are there any other apology? If there is no other apology, we now move on to opening remarks at this At this time, we would want to have the reading, or we take it that the minutes have been read, and if so, that we ask a confirmation of the minutes which were held on the 9th of November 2021. So moved, Chair. Yes, Chair. Are there any matters arising from this minute? Moved by Member Hamilton and seconded by Member Guy. Are there any matters arising from this minute? If there are no matters arising from this minutes, may we now move on to new business. Discussion of the committee's draft report on the child diversion program and juvenile in correctional centers. The draft is before us. Uh, Chairman, I, I am afraid I cannot contribute because I haven't had the, the opportunity to read the, the report. So. Um, you have to pardon me with respect of that. Member Hamilton. Chair, I, I read through it, but I will await Member Guy's input. But it, it was fine when I went through it. It was okay from your point. What about those Member, member Lee and Vaz? Have you read the, the report? All right. As is advised, we will defer this matter to our next meeting as it needs some time for perusal. The next matter. Right. May, uh, Chair. Go ahead. Chair, because of the change of time, I am have to be um, driving, so I want to apologize if I'm breaking up, um, coming in and out. But what happened is that the report is such a long report, and we had I had requested a physical copy, but it was not. Um, no. It, it, because of the size of member, the member, sign. So I have not completed the report, sir. Sorry, member, but you you are taking the wrong matter. The, the matter that you're speaking of is that of the UA report. What we are on now is a child diversion draft report. So you're all right. Oh, I read through that. I read through that. Members, that matter is deferred to the next meeting. Now we have before us the report from the Ministry of National Security on the challenges that they would have been faced with, as we had asked in our last deliberation. Why 
we would have loved to have the no they are not they they have provided with provided to us a reason for not being present please know that the competition the competing priorities on the same day and time did not permit me to be present at the sitting. Notwithstanding, I was appropriately represented by Ms. Ella Garty, Policy Director, Diversion and Juvenile Rehabilitation in the Ministry of National Security. Yours sincerely, Courtney Williams, Permanent Secretary. That is. That was the last meeting. That was the last meeting. Right. But, but um, since, since we, we have received this no, and um, they're not here, there is little discussion we could that can have. be had on on the matter so just the same I, I think we can probably have them come i don't know maybe the next meeting or whenever they can be scheduled we had asked we had asked i, I am aware yes we had asked for them to to make note in a report the challenges that they are facing so is it that do we really need them to be here in person or you, yeah, want, you we, want them to be here to it, discuss? It is right, it is to discuss the way forward. Okay, so we, we, will defer, we will also defer the report on the challenges for the next meeting. I concur, Chairman. I think we need them on, in person. Agree, so, agree. So there you have it, two matters that will move from this meeting into the next as soon as we set that date. Now for the biggie. What, what the members are asking is for somebody from the, the correctional services to be present so that we can go through their challenges that they have noted here and to, to chart the way forward as mentioned by Member Hamilton. Yes, Chair, because that would allow for some kind of consultative kind of discussion instead of us being here discussing with ourselves. I mean, we can't implement, so. Yes, madam, we always encourage a consultative approach to matters so that all parties will have a say in the decision making. So now we will ask the persons or person from the, from UE to be with us so that we can go through this report. And once again, let me say that the document that was sent to us from the University of the West Indies is a very tall document, full, thick, all those words in one. And the <laughs> parliament was having a challenge in printing all of that for members who had asked for copies. But what is asked of us by parliament, if there is a section that you'd have seen, I would love for it to be printed. Then we can make the request and Parliament will print that for us, but they are unable to print the entire doc document for, for, for the, those requested. But, um, Chair, going through the reports, um, I realize that really the, the findings and recommendations are in section 13, I think, of, of, the, right, of the, the, um, the main report. And, and I believe, um, skipping through what I just received, it is here. So we, we could really f zero in on these findings and discuss them. So there wouldn't be a need for the parliament to print anything else. With us this morning from the University of the West Indies, Dr. Maurice Smith. And he is the one that is chartered with the right to represent you today. And so, sir, you now have the floor to take us through. Uh, thank you, Chair. Good morning, and good morning to the members of this uh, committee. Um, your request, Chair, 
Am I being asked to do a brief presentation on the, oh, that had not been communicated to me before, but nonetheless. Um, In as short as possible, to make us members sure. and John public understanding the, the situation. I'll do, my best. The I'll do my best, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, Chair, members, the University of the West Indies, as you know, is a regional body. Uh, it is led by a university council. There are 59 members who sit on that council, 29 of whom are external to the university. Uh, 17 of those 29 external members are representatives of government, so they are drawn from each of the 17 English-speaking Caribbean countries that uh, comprise uh, the, the region, the Caribbean. Uh, that body is led, the council that is, is led by a chancellor that's appointed by the ministers, by the, 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 mini, the prime ministers of the region, the council. Um, ever so often, the council commissions a body to review um, the university in keeping with its, its charter. And that body has responsibility to look at the university to ensure that it is, uh, its management practices are sound and that the university is fulfilling its mandate to the peoples of the region. We've had three commissions thus far, Chair. The first commission was in 1994, the second was in 2006, and the third commission was uh, impaneled by our current chancellor, Mr. Robert Bermudez, in 2018. The work of that committee was undertaken by nine members who were led by um, Sir Barron, um, uh, the retired president of the Caribbean Court of Justice. We have before us, Chair Members, the report, a very detailed report, and there are 95 recommendations emanating um, in that report. And that report is tabled under a number of, of, of headings, governance, um, financial sustainability, corporate and academic governance, people management, and digital transformation. Um, the, the commission would have taken a multimodal approach to understanding what the issues are across the regional space. And I hasten to say, Chair, that very often, unfortunately, um, there are those who think, who confine the university to a particular campus. So I hasten to say that Mona is what one of five campuses. And so this report is not indicative of Mona, but it's rather it is indicative of the entire regional structure. About 50,000 students and about 9,000 team members who comprise the academic, non-academic, and service categories of, of, of team members. And so the report here is comprehensive in, nat in nature. I am not able to speak um, in a granular way to the methodology. I can say that the commission would have participated uh, in focus group discussions, um, interviews, document analysis, um, uh, that sort of thing, and it would have, from its interaction with these individuals and, inter and, and um, groups, would have gleaned its findings, and upon those findings, it would have premised the 95 recommendations that are before us. Uh, the, I, I'm not able to um, comment necessarily on the number of persons in the university space with whom the members would have interacted, but suffice to say that because we are a public body, because we pride ourselves in accountability and transparency, we think that it is important to pay um, keen attention to all the views that have been proffered, whether they be um, aversive or not, um, and to put the necessary measures in place to respond to them. Um, we have embarked on a program of work uh, in my own work, in my own role as university registrar, I can say definitively say that many of the recommendations that have been proffered by the committee um, form the basis of um, management actions that have been pursued and continue to be, to, um, to be pursued since I would have joined the university in 2019. So that chair, members, um, is, a, is, a, is an overview of the report of the, 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 the structure of the Chancellor's uh, Commission on Governance. Thank you. Um, Chairman, um, Registrar, the, you mentioned five campuses. You, the open campus is the fifth one, because I know Mona, Cave Hill, St. Augustine, Bahamas, which is the fifth. 
No, Bahamas is not a campus, um, okay. um, sir. So, so tell it's, us the it's, five then. So it's Mona, the eldest in Jamaica. Then we have um, Cave Hill in Barbados, St. Augustine in Trinidad, the open campus which serves all 17 countries. Mm -hmm. And then we have Five Islands, which is located in um, Antigua. That was okay. launched in August. Five Islands, oh. Antigua, was launched in August 2019. Five. Five islands. No, I heard five campuses, but the one in Antigua. Five islands. That's the name of the campus. Oh, five islands. Yes, oh. sir. Yes, sir. So whilst, whilst many of us would have thought that the report is really on Mona, this is indicative of all five campuses. All five campuses, including the regional headquarters, which is based here in, in Jamaica. Just, one, just that one statement has cleared the ear on many, many hearers. But members, are there any? Oh, you can go into, into the question, Anand. Thank you very much, Chairman. Thank you, colleague. Um, the, the report was tabled in 2020. But um, there seem to have, uh, have been and are many challenges at the university now, and, and quite concerning, because it was within the past four weeks that a newspaper article highlighted some, some of that disturbance that met with some amount of public concern. And it came ho home or came out as seemingly registrar that there is a loggerhead between the chancellor and the vice chancellor and that there was almost like a, a um, two different camps um, seemingly at odds with each other where the university is concerned. What, and probably you might not be in a position to say, or probably might be, not be in a position to want to say, but can you indicate first if there's any dissonance with the two camps, for want of a better word I mentioned. And secondly, what is it that this was sparked by what came out of the report in 2020? Because from a, a cursory reading of, of, of the report, there is recommendations to basically um, cut or reduce some of the powers, ex, I mean, that the vice chancellor has, as well as the chancellor has. So, um, wait, can you, can you, can you um, satisfy my, my concern that I have known before I get on further? Thank you. The, University Registrar leads the team that serves as the Secretariat to the Council and it's governing the other governing bodies. The University Registrar is also a senior um, member of the Executive Management team that is uh, led by the Vice Chancellor. I am not able to confirm, indicate, deny whether or not there is dissonance between the two leaders of the University. What I will say, Chair, uh, members is that this is a complex organization. It has been around for seven decades and like the constitution of any country, we review our constitutional framework to ensure that the institution is agile and that is efficient. There are diverse, divergent as, di as well as there are diverse views with, it, with respect to um, the findings, the methodology. Um, council is still deliberating and in fact a decision will be, de will be made in the next couple of weeks when council meets as it concerns the recommendations that are before us. I, I am not 
in a position, Chair, respectfully, to impugn motive, impute motive or impugn the um, character of our journalistic colleagues who would have put out in the media space their version, their interpretation of what is going on. Um, you would note that the university, um, the articles that came did not emanate from the university. Um, they are, in fact, secondary information, and I am not able to um, commend or commiserate with our colleagues who would have put those articles out. What I, will, I will close by saying, um, sir, that there are um, divergent views with respect to um, the governance report and its findings, but we ought not to conflate, or well, one ought not to conflate the governance um, findings with respect to uh, management, because the, as it concerns the, the specific item you raised, as the, the, the appointment of the vice chancellor. Um, but that's as much as I am able to say, uh, Chair. The well, council will be actually, making. Actually, Registrar, I didn't make reference to the appointment of the vice chancellor. Um, as they're careful not to, to, to speak about that particular issue. But now that you have opened the door, part of the reason why the, 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 the articles in the newspaper and the concern that other people have is born out of a, a report that the vice chancellor had appointed a committee to investigate the chancellor's um, actions as it relates to the appointment of the vice chancellor. Um, that is and not correct, sir. That's not correct. No, sir. Okay. So that is 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 a falsehood then. Yes, that is that that, that is not um, 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 accurate, um, sir. Oh, the, my statement is inaccurate. Your statement is inaccurate. Okay. Um, would you be able to clarify what? What, what came out then? Um, the, the vice chancellor did in fact establish a committee to look at the processes that were um, up enacted as it concerns um, his appointment. It is not that the, the council will in fact be, um, he, he had in fact shared that information with the council when it met in July 2021. And it is my expectation that the council will um, look at that. It is not correct. It's, so it's not the outcome that is before that was before the committee, uh, sir. It's whether or not the processes, the established processes, were were, were observed. Thank you very much, Doctor. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'll for the. Love, love member, member guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad for the clarification. Um, I spent a couple of years at Mona, as you probably would know. And I must confess that that institution has not only done wonders for me, but many others of its graduates. It also taught me to walk between the raindrops as well and to listen and to read the fine prints and also to, to um, for want of a better word, but in Jamaican parlance, to pick sense out of nonsense. But I understand perfectly what you're saying. And I understand that too as a member of the senior management team, that diplomacy has to be part of it, and, and we appreciate that. But I think the, the country has basically, well, for myself, I've gotten an, an idea as to what exists. Um, if I may continue. Chairman. Uh, no, no, I have another. Um, there is part of the governance report which speaks to, and I'm trying to find the exact um, um, term for, the, for those persons who are appointed by the chancellor. Chancellor's nominee. Nominee, yes, chancellor's sir. nominee. Um, why would the, the body that sought to do that report seek to, to um, cut 
the RRRR seek to want to uh, dismantle the, 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 not even dismantle colleague, but um, to deball the chancellor in terms of the persons that he would want to nominate as his nominee. And uh, I can see that there is a period of time that you would want to have that person. And I hear see the rationale um, in the report. But it would also seek to want to determine who the chancellor appoints as his nominee on the, on the council, you know? Well, well, sir, may I, may, I, may I just remind you uh, humbly that the commission was in fact appointed by the chancellor. No. The, I, what I am aware of is that the, comic, the commission did recommend, is recommending that these nominees and other members of the governing bodies have a particular terms of reference and skill sets. So it's the, what, what's recommended is that there be some guidance with respect to, there, there is a set term of office, it's three years, but what's being recommended is that there is um, some guidance with respect to what skill sets these individuals should have, because these skill sets should augur well for the um, efficient oversight and governance of, of the institution. What the, the, the commission is also recommending is that members of governing bodies, because the university is a very democratic uh, environment, so what we are asking for, what the commission is asking for is that there not be a focus on number necessarily, but representation, because in some instances, if you will, share with your indulgence, um, an academic board, each campus has, thank you, each campus has an academic board and all professors are on that academic board. We're coming from the, 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 the statutes and ordinances that speak to that are, are centuries, are decades old. And so we have grown, Mona for instance has over 100 professors. So instead of having a committee members with 100 professors, what the governance committee is in fact recommending is that we don't focus, that we move away from numbers and ensuring that there is representation. So each, each faculty, each department is represented. So um, to use your term, um, sir, if, I, if, if you'd permit me, the, the commission is not recommending that the, mem the members be deballed, mm -hmm. but that there be um, specific terms of reference with respect to skill sets, um, how they'll engage, and to ensure that there is not a focus now on number and quantity, but more so representation from all the, the, the faculties and departments. Go ahead, madam. Uh, through you, Chair. Um, um, so, Registrar, you mentioned at least, what, three previous reviews? Two prior to this one. Um, I recall going through the various reports that I got that the current body that was reviewing, or the last, the last body that reviewed the university um, highlighted or observed that there were findings and recommendations made in the past two reviews that were not implemented and could have helped the university somewhat. How are we to feel comforted that this review, because I, I went through 95 recommendations, how are we to be comforted that this current review or the findings and recommendations will be implemented when the past two have not been? And, and I am particularly you know, challenged because when I went through some of the issues, the university is housed with a, a certain level of expertise when it comes on to management and and, and all of these areas that I found were issues at the university. So I, I found it very strange that the university would not be implementing its own principles. How are we now to, be feel, to, to feel assured that you're going to be implementing these recommendations in addition to the ones that were previously um, provided? And, and those were also included in the current report as recommendations to be implemented? I, I think that's a, that's a very fair question. And if you'd permit me just to provide some um, um, uh, clarification. The, what you would see in the report is a reference to two 
other reports, not governance reports. So we have the 1994 governance report and we have the 2006 governance reports. Those rec the, the university day in terms of structure is um, the, the, the uh, representation of the recommendations made in 1994 and 2006. The two reports that you have cited, the Actain report and the Proke report, the Actain report speaks to um, biz a business model and the Procare report speaks to digital transformation. I wish to assure the member that the Procare report that speaks to digital transformation is being implemented. In fact, the university registrar is the lead on the digital transformation. I, 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 that, that program was assigned to me in January 2021. So the digital transformation program is being implemented vis-a-vis um, -vis the Procare report. The Attain report was done in 2010 and 2018. That speaks to business. That's a whole different conversation because you'll appreciate my saying that the, uh, the, the university is funded by way of government, a grant, um, not just from Jamaica, but from, the, from, but from all other contributing um, governments across the region. And there is a, 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 a conundrum, a dilemma, if you will, um, whereas the, the funds come to center and at the same time, each government that is sovereign does inform the campus on, in its territory as to what its strategic priorities are. And so, we, for instance, we have the budget. The, for instance, Jamaica, the government of Jamaica gives the University of the West Indies a grant to a tune of $9 billion each year. 46% um, of our funding comes from governments across the region. The other 54% is realized through tuition fees, um, research, entrepreneurial and commercial activities. The truth is, the, the truth is that uh, one of the things that we'll, we, 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 we've, we've talked about quite often is whether or not we should raise tuition fees. Now, were we to raise tuition fees, that's going to be a challenge because that's going to deny a population of the region access to higher education. And so the university has been constrained to do that. That's the remit of the government, not the university itself. I may just um, throw this in the mix, um, Chair, remember if you will that our fees are even less than the University of Technology Jamaica, for instance. And so the Actain, yes, the Actain report speaks to um, funding and a business model that the university has been um, trying to navigate, but again, it has to contend with these and other variables that I would have spoken to a while ago in terms of, sourcing of sources of funding and the ability, mm -hmm. the capacity to raise fees, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to balance um, that fiscal space as occasion by making these decisions. Should we increase tuition fees? We have, been, we have embarked on a program of rationalizing staff. That is continuing because we, want, we have to contain um, the internal expenditure in an, in, in an effort to ensure that the institution is fiscally buoyant. But, 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 but by concluding thought on that, Member, if, if you'll allow me, if you'll so permit me, is to say that the university has been implementing, in fact, over 92% of the recommendations that are before us, the 95 recommendations, over 92% of them have been and are being pursued since um, the 2019, even before the report was received in 2020. Um, okay, so is there a timeline within which it is expected that the recommendations, all recommendations will be implemented? I'm, I'm very happy for that question. Um, council had a special sitting in J July 2021, and the council will be meeting in a few weeks, and the, the date is being finalized. Um, in fact, we just finalized that on Monday, so that date is, is being finalized now. Council will meet, and it is expected that at that meeting in a few weeks that the report um, are, the, will, the recommendations will be accepted, will move towards implementation. At that time, I'll be able to answer more definitively as to what are the implementation timelines. But Council meets in a few weeks, and it is widely expected that at that meeting, the report will be formally accepted and approved. And, and, and will, be, will there be an, an implementation task force, per se, to ensure, oversee the Absolutely, absolutely. Council will appoint an implementation task force and it will give it specific terms of reference and timelines by which um, all, implement, all recommendations will be implemented. Um, it, what your response prior to this one had you know, multiple issues you know, coming out, but one of, the, one of the issues that stood out was in relation to the funding mechanism um, and the possible proposal to increase fees Going through, I realized that there was mention made of the augmented income contingency loan model. And, and I was quite you know, intrigued by that. Is there any way I could get further information as to what that would really entail, how it would be implemented? 
Uh, yes, but you, um, uh, please allow me to say that um, council will deliberate and determine, and then we'll go. I'm not able to, it would be irresponsible of me to speak outside of that because council is. Oh, to, so it wasn't something that was previously thought of? No, it, the, 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 well, all of these decisions are ratified, de decided on and ratified at the level of council, and so thereafter I'll be in a better position to speak more definitively. So, but, well, Chair, I, I'm not sure if. You see, a lot of the questions that we're asking now would require certain responses, and it would appear as though the registrar is unable to you know, speak before the council meets to ratify these things. So I, I'm not, you know, it so seems as though we would have to come back. Therefore, what we can do is to tabulate all the questions that we think we have and want answers to. We, we could do that, Chair. However, based on how you know, these things go, I think sometimes questions come organically that you, you may not think about before, um, but for me, I would love for the responses to be able to be forthcoming. Um, he, based on what the registrar is saying, is a bit constrained, you know. So, well, some are, and, and I don't think it would do any injustice if, um, at some latter time, subsequent to meeting of council, that we we reinvite the registrar to clear up some of those. But, would um, you want, would you no, want no, I to... I don't want to postpone the meeting today, Chairman. No, we're not postponing okay. this meeting, no. What I'm asking, you, sorry, is that, bearing in mind that the, the council will meet, do you want to invite them just before they meet or just after they meet? No, no, it, it, would, it would have to be after. So it would appear, from my observation, we are preempting the university in relation to their response to the recommendations. Um, so the information, some of what I would want, would not be forthcoming today because they have not yet met to ratify. Put forward your request. So I we, take we, it we here. can do that. We can do that. But there are other questions I'm sure we can ask, and I'm sure Member Guy will be asking. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Member. Um, Chair, you see, there are two aspects to our meeting today. One are the issues, and two, the recommendations. And certainly, um, the, the council's meeting would not in any way influence or should not in any way influence the issues, right? There are actual issues there. The recommendations is what the council would, would either ratify or vary. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm comforted, um, Dr. Smith, by the fact that you indicated that from 2019, the university has been implemented, what do you say, 90%? 92% of some of the recommendations that have been made. So in terms of the timeline that it would take for implementation should not be very long, right? Having regard to the fact that the university is well on its way already. Um, but if I may go back to the issues and the recommendations, and I see here um, under the, the corporate governance framework, again, um, one of the issues was that the, the limits of spending, the limits are prescribed for campus expenditure and capital projects. The sec second page of the, uh, the, the document we have from the, the house. Second page. Um, that's issue number 14. Final approval of such project ultimately rests with the Vice Chancellor with no requirement for consultation with the university's governing body. And it goes on. And I see the, the raft of recommendations made by the committee. And I would think that in terms of how it is put out here, that it probably would create a longer time frame in implementing these projects, going through the format recommended by the, 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 the committee. Um, because there are sometimes, there are some projects that are time sensitive. There are some projects that will require action, emergency in a sense. There are some projects that because of, say, foreign exchange risk exposure might require a timely um, implementation. And, Although you, you cannot um, preempt what the 
University Council will say in terms of recommendation, but this is one area that um, we are concerned, well, I am concerned that it may retard the, the potential for university to have quick action on certain issues. But um, remember, before you move on, mm -hmm. um, because the digital transformation is critical, and the report mentioned that the digital transformation will assist with a lot of these recommendations being implemented. So I, I well, as you said about preempting the, the council, but it would be an area that I would deem important because it would help with this particular recommendation that you just mentioned. If I, if I may, uh, the concerns, and uh, both concerns are noted. In fact, we would, they accord with our own uh, views and positions on the matter. Um, the, what, 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 would, what, what would be required is for our financial code to be reviewed, and that is already on the way. So I do not expect that, it's not my expectation that this is going to take us very long to do because th that's work that would have already begun. As it concerns the digital transformation, that program is well underway as well. And in fact, in next month, we will be launching, sharing with our, our publics across the region what it is that the university is doing, um, the low hanging fruit, and what are our deliverables and outputs as far as the digital transformation program is concerned. So we, we, we do agree with you and I wish to assure um, you and by extension all members of the committee that this is um, work that is that is quite advanced to one of the concern mentioned by my colleague the university is a major international teaching organization has strong reputation is one of the good schools right across the world and I mean, I'm not saying that because I'm a proud graduate, but to, to go back to her question, the concern I have is the university has expertise, has teaching in all areas, all of the areas that issues have come up um, in this governance report. And even though I'm, I'm, I'm really happy, you know, and I'm somewhat comforted by the fact that the university recognized that some of these things need attention and have been paying some attention to this. How did it, and why did we come to this, right? <laughs> uh, sir, um, the university is 75 next year, and like Jamaica is 60. Uh, this year, and like any uh, corporate entity or no, but 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 registrar, Princess Alice isn't around anymore. No, so the point that I was making, sir, is that at 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 specific points in time, we step aside to reflect and to make the requisite changes. So it is a truth and an undisputable one at that that our constitutional framework does need to change our statutes and our ordinances. Hence the reason, the rationale for the, the commission. So what must now happen is for a hastening of the reform to en ensure that the university is agile enough to respond to the issues. Um, the point that you raised, sir, is, 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 is quite an insightful one. In fact, we often ask that question. Um, and, but we are constrained by the framework which we are in the throes of changing. I wish to also um, indicate or to inform you, sir, that um, our our strategic plan and our, the second tranche of the, of the strategic plan is being introduced 2022, triple A. It speaks to agility, it speaks to access, it speaks to alignment. And a closer um, study of that document will, will, will reveal that we are going to be looking at how best we can commercialize um, be far more entrepreneurial, using the skill sets that we have within the university, using the human resources that we have within the university to assist it, to being far, assist it being far more um, financially viable. So uh, our, for our next five years, our focus is a revenue revolution to do the very things that you, you would have spoken to. Um, just, just to, you mentioned the strategic plan. And um, issue number 40, well, Recommendation 45 and 46 speaks to the financial governance. And that issue spoke to the 17 to 22 strategic plan that appears to push for expansion beyond the means of the university, despite its declining financial health. Now, there's a, the Athenian report 
that was submitted in relation to the financial outlook of the entity spoke to a deficit, a deficit that would require 75 million Barbados dollars annually in order to, for there to be operating of efficiency. To me, that's, that screams crisis because $75 million is not, is, is, not a, is not chicken feed. It's not a small amount of money that you would have to now go in and sit down and try to figure out where it is that you'll cut cost. It, this should have, the minute we received or the university received this report or the attain report, it should have been very high on the, on the agenda of things to do. Where are we, and from an entity, as the member previously said, that houses expertise in a number of areas, where are we now in relation to this deficit, this financial crisis that the university is facing? Well, uh, member, if you will, the, what is before us has been before the university for quite some time in terms of it needing to be a priority as far as management is concerned. How do we, how, how do we ensure uh, fiscal prudence? How do we ensure that we cauterize the bleed? Um, we have had and continue to have several discussions with um, uh, our funding partners, governments, whose, whose uh, I don't want to say debt, whose investments to us accumulate over time. Um, so they are quite seized with the need to provide the resources that um, have not been provided. Now, we understand what the issues are as far as the fiscal um, outlook is concerned across the region. Right, because I, I was going pandemic. to say to you that, yes. I mean, there is only so much Absolutely. that these countries can possibly do. So Absolutely. the university now will have to get creative. Uh, which is why, which is precisely why, which is exactly why our focus for the next five years is dubbed revenue revolution. So we are exploring a number of bankable projects that will cause us to cauterize the bleed, financial bleed, and become far more um, um, viable, financially speaking. To that, end, to, to that end, we have put together a risk management committee. We've also assembled um, a corporate investment committee, to, capital investment committee, rather, to look at bankable projects across the region, campus by campus, to see what each campus can do to ensure that it, it, it reduces the spend, but also increases the revenue it generates and earns from these projects. Um, so again, the structure is before. The, the, in fact, the Trinidad St. Augustine would have just, council would have approved last year uh, uh, an offshore medical school for St. Augustine. Mona has projects, each campus has projects, bankable projects, that are being pursued that will enable us to become um, more fiscally buoyant. So the revenue revolution is underway, and we're not depending on our, 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 our sponsors in terms of governments, because that it, it, we are all challenged, and the pie continues to, to in, the, the demands are many, and government doesn't have the resources, governments across the region do not have the resources, and so you are absolutely correct. The university is being far more creative and far more innovative in, in raising capital for itself. The, these, these projects now, are they utilizing existing resources existing as opposed resources. to adding to, and what are some of the cost-saving strategies Ex that, are, that are being implemented now to, to reduce this, this deficit? Existing Outside of ad adding these, you know, these, yeah. Well, Additional well, bureaucracy, exactly. And that's, and that's not, in fact, we have, been re, we have been repurposing a number of positions. We have been reducing the size, we have been repurposing, we have been consolidating. So there are a number of things that we are doing within the university, internal to the university, to ensure that we, 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 we become much more efficient in terms of the use of our human and fiscal financial resources. Um, you, you mentioned that this issue has been before the university for some time now. It means that the strategies um, have already been in place to address Strategy, this yes. issue. That is so is it, is it possible for us to be given um, this information to see you know, what has happened over the years, where you are in relation to your strategy, your goals? And, and, and the timelines within which and what is expected. You know, I would love to say the financial um, projection, you know, based on the, the strategies that sure, you've put in sure. place. Um, whatever the committee, information the committee um, desires to have, I'm sure through um, the secretariat we'll get that and we'll provide that. And to possibly include this augmented new model 
of, of funding, please, because I, I'm very interested to know more about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Ms. Brandon? Absolutely. Can I add a proviso to what you just said, Registrar? Whatever the committee requires that you are at liberty to give. Yes. Then. Well, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, absolutely, sir. I, I, but, but I was I just, that's just a quip. Um, <laughs> COVID has made things difficult very. for everyone, and particularly for the university. And recently, there was a challenge in terms of um, how to continue to operate without charging more to the students for their tuition fees. But like every institution and every entity, except government, there's always some res reserve, some resources that you have as assets. Now, and I'm not talking about it, but I'm just reflecting on that now, particularly in this COVID time, and juxtaposing against the, the proposal for increased revenue with the projects. Doesn't the university possess significant assets that could be utilized during this particular time to offset some of the challenges the university has? Secondly, the university does a lot of research and development. And I would think, if it has not already been part of your plans, that the, the proprietor rights to this research could be utilized to make money for the university. Um, most universities, well, many universities traditionally they do research, and the research is shared, and everybody, there's no, there's no patent of anything or so. But we live in a different time now, um, Registrar, and the University of the West Indies has done very excellent research, and some of those research, the, 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 the results of those research are bankable. Have we looked in this particular direction to see whether this could be utilized as part of the income generating scheme for the university to ensure that its continued survival, to ensure that more research is added to the university, and to, to help at the end of the day to provide quality education, affordable education, and, and augmenting the value of the university as a regional institution. Um, absolutely, absolutely, sir. In fact, uh, the pro vice chancellor for graduate studies has been tasked, was tasked, to build out the, an entrepreneurship um, portfolio that speaks to the very issues that you would have shared a while ago in terms of patents and bankable research projects. So we are on, 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 on our way where that is concerned. I can provide additional data to support that, and I, uh, if, you, if, if, if the committee would so permit me, then um, I will collate that and I can share that information. As it concerns the first question, um, does the university have significant assets that it has had to pull on? Yes, but in terms of the details, I would respectfully ask that you permit me to defer to the University of Bursar, as that is outside of my competence. But I am aware. Chairman, thank you. Back to the, the findings and so on. You know, I'm looking at finding 20, um, six, seven, recommendation 26, seven, and 28, 29. And you know, um, um, Registrar, I'm seeing here that, and, and forgive me if it is part of the, the, the name prescribed in the university ordinance, but the university executive management team should be renamed the university senior management committee, you know, um, and formally established by ordinance. Is it that the ordinance has a university executive management team as part of? The, the short answer to that, sir, is no. The, the re re references to senior executive management or executive management do not now exist in our statutes and ordinances. And um, the review process, there's a council had a point, had, had engaged a review process or a process to review these 95 recommendations. That is what is going to council in the next couple of weeks. And um, there is a position on that that council will um, determine. But as here and now, um, these bodies, though they exist, they, do, they are not now in our, in our constitution. And again, I make the point that um, our statute and, statutes and ordinances, our constitution does need to be um, made far more contemporary and relevant to the times.
Yeah, but, but, but no, no, my, my simple point, you know, is that um, in this case, it's, it's, it's just nomenclature because it is the same persons who would comprise what you have here, the, the university's executive management team. I mean, what's, what's, what, what, what are you seeking to cure by renaming the university senior management committee? Uh, remember, if I may, I am not a part of the no, I understand, but I mean commission. Um, I, however, lead the, the review process, so I can, I can best articulate what the review process is intending to recommend to council. But um, as far as I, I, I understand, um, I, I don't think there is much support for recommendation 29. OK. Well, well, well um, member, through you, Chair, member, th there is a recommendation that speaks to the institution of executive committees, which would be separate and apart from what currently exists. So I think basically what they're saying is to change the name of what currently exists to accommodate the institution yes. of this new Structure. executive. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Yes. I think that's where that came from. Except the executive committees that are being purported by this report are operate at the level of council, right. not yes. at the level of exactly. management. Yes. But yes. a position is, to, is, is being recommended, and I'm sure council will make that determination when it, when it sits. Also, probably it's just to prevent the... The, um, the confusion the between confusion. the two, yes. Okay, yes. all right. I can, buy, I can live with that then. <clears throat> yes, um, you, you hinted at it earlier on, um, Dr. Smith, the, the membership of the academic board. And yes, we have been part of the British tradition, where all the professors are members of the academic board. And uh, um, there is a reason for that, because there are some students who feel aggrieved that one particular professor or so might not necessarily, but fine. But why is it that we cannot get, and yes, the body, if, if you have 100 professors now, then certainly you're going to have a challenge in terms of meeting. And I see the recommendation to, to review it to between 20 and 25. Um, but do the professors really appreciate the fact that they are part of this board and they are expected to be present at these meetings? I know you can't answer that question, but well, well, I'm chair, just Well, Chair, um, member, so based on the recommendation, I will assume that one of the reasons you won't, you, will, you have this absenteeism is because there's no incentivization of... But, uh, be, have have so, drinks so, or so at the meeting? Is that the, an incentive? No, no, no. Part of their remit in being a professor is that you need to attend. Your, 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 your part of your function is that you're a part of the academic board. But they're not sufficiently moved enough to attend. So you and, need and to that provide is the what? Issue. Um, a drink and food, German? or so I'd for them to incentivize them. <laughs> I'm just being frivolous. But it is a point that, 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 that is a serious one. It is so serious that we have, uh, can we continue our discussions with respect to how we will, I, I don't want to say reward the behavior, but ensure that there is compliance and that we hold people accountable um, for the discharge, of, uh, the discharge of their duties. But let me ask a question, though, on the, the issue raised by Member Guy, and you, Mr. Smith, Dr. Smith, is confirming, same. What is there within the, the, the laws of, that governs the university to hold these people accountable? Because whether it is by salary or by volunteerism, you would have given the confirmation that yes, you would be a part of a situation. So why in the middle of it now you're finding it difficult to live sure. up to the expectation? Uh, and so there has to be checks and balance, even if it is that it is, <coughs> sorry, that you're volunteering your time because what you're doing is to rob those who really need the service or your time or your expertise. And if you're finding difficulty, don't cost the employer. Leave the work. 
what, somebody else will take it up. What, what your, the, the, the exact report here that we're reviewing it speaks to the, the governance structure as a problem and the fact exactly that persons, so. persons are not being held to account. But what, so, what, what we're finding, member, is that accountability may go thus far, but there has to be a chain of command. And also, if there is a chain of command, there has to be a chain of accountability. So somebody going up the ladder, coming up the ladder, you have to have to answer to somebody or to, a, to, to some department. But it, it, cannot, it, it is, cannot be. It is not being practiced here. It and is that, not that is being the problem practiced. That is that for me, I see that as basically one of the foundation issues. That is, the core, right that is a core issue that is causing but this problem that, that we have in front of us. Sure. How do we treat this situation? What are the suggestions going forward as to how we tackle Chair, I this situation? Say that I, 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 I disagree with you. I, I do not think that there is anybody in the university space that would disagree with those pronouncements. What I will say is this, and I keep making the point because it is true. I didn't hear that. I said I do not think that there's anyone in the university space that would disagree with those pronouncements. Okay. We do need to hold each other accountable. And, but the, the challenge for us is, again, an archaic and obsolete constitution or statutes and ordinances. Now, of the 62 ordinances that the university has, the only one that deals with these HR issues is what we call, it's the eighth ordinance, Ordinance 8, which, which, which I'm, I've been leading that process now for the last 16 months. And we would have completed, and this is independent of the governance report, which is what I'm saying, the majority of recommendations are being pursued outside of the, 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 the report. The truth is that we completed our work and we handed it to the unions in September last year. So this is the only ordinance that is negotiated with the unions. Um, that, so we, we, and we, we do have these um, committee meetings. In fact, there's one slated for February 14 and 15. So I am fairly confident that the ordinance which speaks to these um, very issues, um, they, it, it goes through a process, and I'm fairly confident that it will be accepted and will be implemented in short order. So you, you're saying that the very creature of, the, of any university right around the world has become the, the, the obstacle? No, I, no I, I didn't say that, Chair. You didn't? I didn't say that. Um, oh, but that's Chairman. what I am getting from, from, because you're saying that the unions are the ones that are holding up the situation. Well, it, on, all, I'm, all I'm saying, Chair, is that the management would have completed its work in terms of revising the draft ordinance, but it's a negotiated process, so they are our critical partners. That process, we would have done our work, and it's, it was handed to them for consultation with their members. I know that they are consulting with their members, and we meet again on February 14 to continue union. our discussion. But then, but then who, holds the, the, who, who holds the unions accountable to the situation? Because the union don't represent themselves, they represent... No. A body of, of persons. Their members hold them uh, account, but, the, but the, the, man, the university management will proceed with doing what it needs to do as far as ensuring that the accountability infrastructure is intact. So we will proceed. Um, Chairman, I have a slightly different um, thinking where this is concerned, and not condoning slackness, not condoning the, the need for people to be responsible and to be responsive as well. But there's also the matter, and I suspect that is the reason why there's a little delicacy in how it is being done. And Chairman, I disagree somewhat in the sense that you made a statement that if you're not at the work, left you, somebody else will take you. The nature of university sometimes gives prominence based on who you have as head of a particular institution, the credentials of that particular individual, how, what esteem they're held in by the international organization and international community, um, the research they have done, and all of that. And sometimes if that hard-nosed approach is taken, what may happen is that they will be welcomed elsewhere. So I, I, I somewhat can um, sympathize 
with the challenges the university is having in respect of that. But still, it does not obviate the need to have those checks and balances in place so that um, any person who is a, given a, a position of responsibility exercises that responsibility. So I, I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that in the mix. Well, well, well thank you, uh, sir. I'm sure if you will, the unions are, as I would have alluded to them before, they are critical partners in the management, the administration of the university. They are highly productive and highly supportive and just want to ensure that the framework that is in place is, 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 is transparent, is fair, and is equitable. I have no doubt that they will, as they have always done, that they will do their part in ensuring that uh, we provide we hold our team members accountable, but we also provide them with the, the, the relevant levels of support so that they can do what it is that they need to um, get done as professionals. So I have no doubt that this um, partnership will continue and that we'll be able to produce an ordinance um, that will augur well for the, the advancement of the institution. Can I move to 52 to 54? I find it a little strange, Registrar, and although that is not um, within your pay scale, but the, the seeming independence of the campus red bursas, you know, outside of the university bursa, I see here where one of the issues there is inadequate supervision and oversight of the campus bursas leading to campuses without consulting university bursa making critical financial decisions that bind the university. No, no, I mean, yes, it is, it, it, it seems as if these respective campuses are operating in silos without the recognition that it is a regional organization and you report to someone, right? And um, I see the recommendation here and I could not but agree that there has to be some pulling up and some reporting and some, 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 some um, oversight in terms of what happens. Because when you bind the university to financial decisions, it may fail on one particular campus, but the university at the end of the day has the responsibility to pay back that money or whatever losses that might have been incurred. And I find too, if you look at 53 and 54 as well, um, it goes back to some of what I've been speaking to before in terms of um, not only the research, but the consultancy that the university um, personnel, lecturers and, and professors do, that based on their arrangements, some of that fee should go to the university. And seemingly, there has been no, um, no oversight in respect of that. So the university could stand to lose revenues as a consequence of that oversight lack of oversight. But not wrong, nothing is wrong. When you look at 55 in, on page nine, it says the financial sustainability of the UE is at risk based on the current funding module, model, sorry, key financial metrics for. And the recommendation going forward is adopt a new funding model. Is, can you comment on, on, on that recommendation or issue? Sorry? I believe it's the same model that I requested information on earlier which he's saying he's not able to provide us with that information yeah. now until the council meets. Okay, then. Um, Dr. Smith, the, there are basically two, as far as I know, I'm, I'm sure there are many others, models in terms of how university operates. Um, the traditional British and the American, and there might be others too, but I'm only speaking to what I know. I know over the years the university has been straddling both, both sides in terms of um, who, to what extent people are named professors and 
because the, the, there's a different model in the US as opposed to in the British um, system. Where are we now? Because we are a hybrid, but to whom are we closer? I think we are closer to the British uh, model, but the, the system in terms of how people are appointed professors, that is a part of the ordinance eight, which is being reviewed. So that, that is subject to heavy consultation by the very members in whose interest um, the ordinance is designed to promote. Um, so that spe the ordinance speaks to promotion, speaks to appointment, it speaks to disciplinary issues, it speaks to termination, it speaks to the, the major HR and personal issues. So um, inherent in that ordinance is a review of the process um, by which one would be um, assessed to be um, elevated to the, to the rank of, of professorship. I would hope that in that review that the, the requirements in terms of will not be altered. Absolutely. Uh, the, the university is very um, stern, very mindful of, in, of protecting its academic integrity and its standards, and we're not going to be lowering the standards. In fact, we're looking at how best we can support our, our, our colleagues to ensure that they, they attain a certain level, but it, we, we, we seek to preserve the academic integrity of the institution. My, my question, though, is that uh, I do understand the integrity of the university speaks volume to its existence, and so you need to maintain. But one of my, or one of my concerns really is that as we in Jamaica will say that if it is not broken, no fix it. But the real question, the real meat of the matter is how often do we look at our procedure, procedural process our maintenance process to really to understand whether we need to tweak it, whether we need to amend a situation to make it move in with the times that they are now, because we do understand that with all that has taken place over a very short period of time, maybe just a decade, that so many things we could adjust, we could change to make us move in with the time, yet still not disturbing the integrity of the institution. Chair, you are, you are very correct, Chair, which is, which is why this process was embarked upon, and we want to now move the dispatch to ensure that we um, attend to the issue so that we, we fix what needs to be fixed and we maintain what needs to be maintained just to ensure that we are, we are responsive. So you, you, and, and that takes place at varying levels, not only at the level of the commission, which is um, as empaneled once every 10 years, but, there are, but the, each, each, each layer in the university has a process of risk, a process of monitoring, a process of auditing to ensure that we are constantly reflecting on ourselves and effecting the necessary improvements. Registrar, I'm on the final page 91. Um, the UE reality, or reality, reality. Mm -hmm. um, the, over the years, in terms of accommodation, initially, in fact, when I was going and on campus, the university is one that operated the halls of residences. But over the past couple of years, I probably I think over the last decade, university has um, entered into arrangements with private sector entities to build out accommodation for students, which Yes, those are better in terms of how they are um, built, in terms of the infrastructure. But with that comes the added costs that are incurred. And there have been complaints from many students that it's unaffordable. In fact, there are many of those halls of residences which are in a partnership, private sector partnership, are only occupied by persons from abroad, um, students from other territories where their um, currency carries a little more weight than the Jamaicans. Does the university, 
I don't know. Um, does the university have any control in terms of how the charges are for accommodation on these halls or these residences? And is that model only pursued, as my colleague here is asking me, in Jamaica? Or are we seeing that generally occurring across the, the, um, the campuses, the four campuses of the university? The, the four, what we call landed campuses. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Um, the, uh, Mona is not the only campus that has this public partner, pu public private partnership approach to um, residences. So Mona is not the only one. So the short answer to your question is yes, it is existing on other campuses. Um, with respect to the, f the former question that you asked, um, I, I, I think these are decisions that are made at the level of the campuses and don't fall necessarily within the purview of the university because each campus has a certain latitude. It's a sort, it is, there's a, a semi-autonomy that it has at, um, to make these sorts of decisions, um, which is why um, we are insisting that there is a risk management mm -hmm. um, um, element that, mm -hmm. that, that guides and ensures um, that decisions are not made that will negatively impact the entire university operation. So that's why we would have also moved to set up the Capital Allocation Committee to look at these things to ensure that it is fiscally sound, that there is prudence in terms of good business management so that decisions arrived at all go well for the institution. Um, Chair, through you, because I, I listened to the response just now and, and the question that was asked, because it raised another issue. If it is that these campuses have the autonomy to implement these projects, at what point do they report to the council then? for the council to either ratify or to say this should not have been implemented. Because it goes back to the issue within the report about the campuses making decisions that impact the budget, the finances. And I mean, it must be that there is some mechanism where the campuses must report. So, or is it being said that there is no reporting taking place? Because we really should not be in this position if it is that the reporting was taking place over all of these years, or all of these projects. For oh, reporting after the fact. But so so do these campuses before, huh? you, you had a, a, a side talk earlier where you did mention to member guy that the campuses are operating, they're, they're operating in, a silo. in silos. Yes, and they're because operating of in silos. That, because of that, each man thinks for himself only. And that is part and parcel of the bigger problem of the situation. And until, until the council that be start to act the way that it should or task, task to act in which they will deal with the situation accordingly as one entity and not one campus here and one campus there, then we are not getting anywhere and we won't be get anywhere. Be because, Chair, so it, it must is, have been identified from before that this is how campuses have been operating. And I mean, if, if something happened once and nothing was done, there's no check and balance and it continues to happen. I mean, who do you now hold accountable? Accountable. And that is, a, that is an operative word in the whole thing, accountability. Because, and you, you, we might want to move a little away from the situation. We have a lot of regional bodies, and our regional bodies tend to lose focus, tend to lose their grip, all because of everybody acting in a silo. And I'm very, very, very disappointed today and I hope that it does not happen to the University of the West Indies in that way that which it has affected things, I mean, regional groups such as even our cricket, for, for instance. If it gets to that point, then we are in for a sad day. 
So we need to pull it back. We need to pull back things. We need to say to each other, in this matter, because of the treaty of Sugar Ramos and, and others, we are at one. Chairman. The U.S. always prided itself, saying that it is the only regional institution that has remained, not only has remained, but has remained and is relevant and changing with the times. I'm very happy, Registrar, that this has come before us today so that you know some of the issues and though not the recommendations you can speak to, you know, have been raised. But what I am comforted by is that earlier statement you made that the management executive management committee of the university has been reassessing the needs of the university over a period of time. Because I don't think it is only my hope, but the hope of us here and all of those who are listening to us and the other members of the committee, that the University of the West Indies continue to be the University of the West Indies, to be what we knew when we were going to school a long time before even my colleague here was born, you know? It has served the Caribbean people well over the many years. I mean, just looking at the, the preamble to the report, how many um, Caribbean prime ministers and how many graduates of the University of the West Indies and how successful they have been internationally and also for the, for the respective countries in the Caribbean. So I'm happy that that there is a, a concerted effort to ensure the sustainability and the survival of the University of the West Indies. Um, I know, as you have said, that there are challenges and are challenges with funding, especially from the, the contributing territories. And in as much as you have been given the, the mandate to try and find the other 55% of the the um, income that is necessary to operate the university. I think, Chairman, it is something that needs to be said, and we can say it here, that the contributing territories, in spite of, and despite the fact that countries are facing challenges, should also have a relook as to see how better they can make contributions to sustain this important regional institution. At the same time, however, the university has to be responsive to the requirements of the region and of the countries. In that, some of the programs that previously existed and some of those programs that the university took pride in, in offering are no longer relevant to, to sustainability of the islands, of the region, of the world. And in terms of having new programs instituted, modern programs that can have that reach, being part of the developmental process is critical to have. So whilst we're looking at the governance part of it, there also needs to be a, a relook at the academic offerings of the university. And what the university runs the risk of is a situation where the newer kids on the block are offering programs which um, that they can find, their graduates can find ready work out there. But the graduate of the University of the West Indies with a, 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 a BA in um, West Indian history, and I don't want Professor um, Verin Shepherd to get angry with me, but something of the, that nature, you know. I mean, there's no teaching job for them out there, you know, and they're languishing. So part of what needs to happen with this call I am making for the regional governments to contribute more is that the university has to be responsive to the needs. And it's almost like a quid pro quo. If we are going to be giving you more funding, then you ought to be able to, to satisfy the demands and the requirements of our economies. So you have been listening to you talking, and I realize something just at a eureka moment just now. 
because you spoke about the offerings. The offerings are antiquated, pretty much. Somewhat. But for some reason, the funding aspect of it and the financial aspect of the university has outgrown, no, it has outgrown the economic environment of the Caribbean. So financially, you've outgrown us in the Caribbean, but when you look at the programs that you offer, you are still kind of behind. So there's really a, some kind of a dissonance, a deficit there that you know, we have to try to bridge that gap. So financially, we must be seeing the benefits. You can't have this huge financial budget out there, and at the end of the day, the students are at bay, at sea, can't find work. You know, it's, it's a real issue, and, and I'm a bit concerned because it is still only a percentage of our population that attends university. That is a real problem. So we have to, I read in the report, you know, the, the reason for the university, you know, to, to ensure that the Caribbean, our people are uplifted. And, but I'm not sure if we are carrying out the mandate that we ought to be carrying out. Um, which, which is, sorry. I would, like, here, I would like to jump in right here with member Toba Hamilton. All I'm listening to, I've not he heard the most critical aspect of all of this is the students who are suffering because of what all of this is happening in the university. I would like the university to come back. The focus of a university is the welfare and education of our population. And I'm not hearing that. I'm hearing the power struggle. I'm hearing all sorts of things. And I think we need to come back to the main focus, which is our students and our population being educated. So, member, member Vaz, you, you are you're correct in your pronouncement, but I, I think that what we are here doing, if we really get it right, then it serves the purpose of the, the students that we, we seek to serve, because all that is happening, if we control the power struggle, if we control the financial aspect and make it work, then the, the students are the ones that are really going to benefit. So, yes, yes you're on par. May I, may I just be allowed to say, it would be remiss of me not to say, Chair, uh, Member, that it, it, it is not correct to say that there is no reporting um, by the campuses. Um, the governance, what we are discussing today is the report of the governance um, commission. I could speak um, extensively to matters with student matters, but that's a different subject um, altogether. But the governance support um, highlights some particular issues, and I'm saying there is great um, support for the majority of the recommendations, and we are far down the road with, with respect to improving our accountability measures to ensure that, that our, our, our staff members at each of the campuses, the staff members within the university operate at a more efficient level to ensure that we deliver a better, more agile, responsive university for our students and certainly for um, the, the, the Caribbean. So we are far down the road in terms of pursuing strategies, practical strategies that will give us um, the kind of buoyancy that they, they, the report envisages. So, Registrar, so you mentioned a while ago that the issue is not that there isn't reporting. But it is not just reporting in isolation. So the reporting aspect of what we were referring to earlier was in relation to decisions made by the various campuses that affect the whole. And it, it cannot be that the reporting takes place after because that is why we're in the 75 million Barbados dollar bind. Well, a part of it, a part of it. And it's a huge part, I can imagine. Because it, it, it is unfair for campuses to be putting the university in liability without the university having knowledge of it to prepare for the financial aspects of it. And, and from, that is what I gathered from the reports 
or one of the one of the main issues that we're having with governance and the financial aspects. So, so the structures that the governance commission are recommending and the structures which are being which were reviewed by the review committee to be presented to council for decision. Those structures we believe will reduce that, that sort of issues, prevent those sorts of issues, um, correct the issues so that going forward decision making is more sound, that it is futuristic, so that we don't come to only look back on faulty decisions made, that we, we examine risks before and that we hold people accountable at, at all levels. But what about the, the auditing aspects of the university? So yeah. it, it wasn't working? Well, we have a, we, we have a, in, we have a very buoyant um, audit process. In fact, uh, up, to, up to 2020, the university audit was, the committee was led by Senator Hill. So we do have a very buoyant um, audit committee, which is an independent committee of the, 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 the council. Um, I think where we would have dropped the ball is perhaps the risk management looking forward. And we have since taken steps to ensure that we d do a risk management profile for all um, such decisions. So, so, so based on what you're saying here today, uh, the committee can rest assured that the university is heading in the right direction? The, the, over 90% of the recommendations that are here um, were being pursued, are being pursued outside of the, um, the governance support. So I want to give the committee the assurance that the university has taken care to examine and to look at what our deficiencies are, what do we need to do to improve, to ensure that we are far more buoyant, far more responsive, much more efficient as, as an organization. And as I saw mention made of one of the reasons why issues, you know, the, the, the university is having an issue is the competition that's in this, the market at, the, at this time. But I'm hoping that the university will not try to compete with what is out there in the negative sense. Because I find that the, 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 the mere fact that there's competition in the market, sometimes we make decisions that are adverse to us because we think we should compete. Um, I, I think we, we really need to be more strategic in some of the decisions that are made to deal with competition. Are there, are there any other questions, concerns that need to be aired at this time? Um, Chairman, I, there's only one that was already raised, and it is for the committee to request that after mm -hmm. council meets that the, the registrar comes back and his team, if he so re requires. Um, he seemed to be quite knowledgeable, but alone today, you know, so um, that is... Is that knowledgeable then? <laughs> Being alone, no really matter much. It's only safety numbers, you know, Chairman. I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I feel safe with the, with the committee, Chair, and the university looks forward to um, coming back to, to continue the, the, the conversations. Okay, then. So at this time, if there, is, there are no further question concern, that we say thank you to Dr. Maurice Stimmett and that he will take back our appreciation to his employers to say that he has done well, but we still need a lot more. And so they will make sure that they address the situation and get him up to speed with the necessary and if they want to send company with him on the next journey here then we will do accommodate the situation but we expect to see you in and at the earliest possible time that we can lay to rest our fears our concerns and questions and so the populace that we seek to serve will have more comforting feeling where the University of the West Indies is concerned. Thank you for coming this morning, sir. Are there any other business?
our business is at this time. So we look at the date for our next meeting. So here we have two dates, the 16th or the 23rd of February, sorry, 2022. Yes. And remember we have to be, we set these dates tentatively. The seventh and comes back on the tenth. Sorry? And the sixteenth would be the following Wednesday. You're good with the sixteenth? Sorry? Time ten ten AM? Do we have an agenda item then, for not for then? We have the, the, right, those that we have, so we have two matters. Uh, right, all right. Sorry? So moved? Yes, we are. Moved by Member Hamilton, seconded by Member Guy. This meeting now stand adjourned. The following is brought to you by the Office of the Prime Minister. When your turn comes for the vaccine, please take the vaccine. It is absolutely important for those who have hesitancy and fear and all of that is legitimate. It's healthy. But I believe we have seen the vaccine at work. We know what the risks are.